Gentlemen, this is the second to last video. So on energy and chemical reactions, we just talked about the law of conservation of mass. Now it's the law of conservation of energy. We're again in a non-nuclear process and energy can be neither created nor destroyed. However, potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy and vice versa. So let's talk about potential energy. Potential energy, is going to be, and I need my green pen again, my real green, is going to be energy of position. And um, energy of position is going to be very important for chemistry, both potential and kinetic energy, for sure. Now, if we were in a physics class, In a physics class, the equation for potential energy, and PE is the abbreviation for potential energy, PE equals mass times gravity times height, M times G times H. And our picture of potential energy might look something like this. So here's a cliff. Here's a ball that's about to fall off of a cliff. And that ball has M equals mass. It has and H equals height. And G is the conversion factor, really, or the multiplier, if you will. So G equals gravity is what allows you to turn two things you can measure, mass and height, those are going to be physical properties, into the amount of potential energy that's stored. Okay, um, And what you can see is when the position of the ball changes from up here to down here, there's going to be a change in potential energy. Now that's the physics example. And I have a whole nother page here for the chemistry example. In chemistry, potential energy relates to the position of atoms. Potential energy relates to position of positions of atoms. Any time that the positions of atoms change, so does your potential energy. So, uh, example, it's going to be the same chemical reaction we've had before. It's going to be two H2O molecules, turn out to be in the liquid phase, going to two hydrogen molecules in the gas phase, plus one oxygen in the gas phase. And so we've already talked about this um, as far as a being a chemical reaction. Now we're talking about it as a change in the potential energy because, as we already said, the oxygen is positioned near the hydrogen. And then its position changes as it gets close to another oxygen. So oxygen positioned near oxygen. And we may not have any idea about whether the potential energy decreases as you go from reactants to products or whether it increases, but we know that when the position changes that we should expect a change in potential energy, okay? All right, and the same thing can be done for the hydrogens. The hydrogens are near oxygen and the hydrogens are near other hydrogens. So lots of potential energy changes. And 
this potential energy of reactions is oftentimes times called chemical energy. But at its heart, and if you were a physicist, you might say it's all just potential energy. Um, and by the way, the position of atoms in things like batteries is exactly this with a different chemical reaction that occurs. And that battery that we showed in the previous video, that is supplying energy to make this reaction happen. All right. So now back to kinet or on to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, as we've talked about, is energy of motion. Its symbol is K, capital K, capital E. And um, oh, so we've already talked about how as you go from the solid to the liquid, to the gas phase, the kinetic energy increases. In fact, we've drawn pictures of it. And we've also talked about how temperature increases as well. And in fact, we wrote kinetic energy average is proportional to temperature. And I didn't specifically say it then because we hadn't talked about it yet, but your T must be in Kelvin. Strictly proportional. Um, uh, well, yes, <laughs> always use Kelvin and you'll always be safe, let's say. All right, so um, another, so where we're going with this is that there is an energy, a kinetic energy, that is associated with temperature. There is a kinetic energy that is associated with temperature, and this is sometimes called thermal energy. It is true that in a warmer room, the molecules in the air and the, and the molecules in the table are moving faster, have more kinetic energy. So the table uh, in its solid phase, the molecules will be vibrating faster and the air molecules will be traveling faster and that's why higher temperature has more kinetic energy, and there's a term for that called the thermal energy. Now, the last thing we wanna do in this video is actually put energy into this chemical reaction. So we saw that you, when you hooked it up to a battery in that video, that this reaction occurred. So we are putting in, in, energy and it says example of kinetic energy being converted into potential energy i'm going to take that part away because it's not clear that that's what we're doing right now and i apologize for that what is clear is that we're putting in energy from that battery from the battery and we're using that energy to turn the water into hydrogen and oxygen to turn H2O or two H2Os into two hydrogens and O2. That's what the battery supplies. The battery is supplying energy and uh, we don't know where this number comes from and we won't for a little while, but what we know is and that, so kilojoules is gonna be units of energy, K 
kj equals kilojoules, which is a, an energy unit. And um, now, if we take our water and we add energy to it to make our products, that's what's called an endothermic reaction. Our endo means into, and therm means heat. So endothermic means uh, heat is going into the reaction, into heat reaction. Well, it's a little backwards, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, the opposite would be an exothermic reaction. And an example of an exothermic reaction would be, so take natural gas used to heat your house plus, I think it's going to be 2O2 goes to CO2 plus 2H2O and we're going to make that H2O gas because it's going to be hot plus heat and I'm sorry I don't have that exact number but when heat or energy is on the product side heat or energy on product side another way of saying that is that heat is produced energy is produced that's an exothermic reaction um, yeah